I was in college and we had to, we had a project where we had to find an artist or somebody to interview. I was a big comics fan and um, I sent uh, a 2000 AD artist called Simon Davis a, uh, an email with a couple of questions on it, not thinking that he'd ever bother replying. And uh, he replied in, within like 10 minutes, he must have been really bored. A couple of times in that email he used the phrase illustrator and I realised that that's the, that's the word I've been looking for, it's not graphic design, it's not just artist, it's illustration, that's, that's what it is that I want to do. I was drawn to the, these sort of specific kinds of artwork, um, illustration, sort of comic art and things like that. Being a kid, you know, everyone gets you like Beano and Dandy and stuff like that, but I got kind of sick of that stuff pretty quickly. And I saw this dude with his helmet on, this massive motorcycle and a massive gun. I must have been like literally six years old and I was like, that, I want that. And uh, yeah, it was first Judge Dread comic. So from there, you know, discovered 2000 AD and it's like super detailed, really sort of painted, sometimes really abstract stuff, like really satirical, really dark, and um, full of sort of magic and anarchism and chaos, all sorts of great stuff that started just feeding my imagination immediately. The tools I was using to make art were pretty separate for a long time, so I'd sort of developed quite a lot of painted styles based off of my inspirations from 2000 AD and that conversation with Simon Davis as well, talking about what he uses, which are quite similar to tools that I had access to, so I started trying to sort of recreate the ways he was working. So I developed a kind of very sort of dark, painted style of working. But it wasn't for a long time between that and I started sort of connecting things up with screen printing. Screen printing is a traditional form of reproducing artwork so you know within that it becomes an art form of itself because you need to construct an image in such a way that it is printable in a small number of colours. A lot of it is trying to work with constraints, with working how you, out how you can reduce that number. Um, of course every time you add a colour you've got another opportunity to fuck the whole thing up as well. One of the things I really loved about gig posters is the fact that there's quite a freedom of expression that's all down to the artist within that. Like within album sleeves and sort of merchandising generally, it's got to represent the band for a really long period of time. So they're really uh, focused on how it identifies them and their music the way they see it. Um, gig posters and stuff, they tend to be a little bit more ephemeral. You know, they're for one specific show at one specific time. Uh, so the artist has a lot more freedom in that. You see a lot of different interpretations of the same work. So you have the source material, which is the band's music, and then you have that a freedom of interpretation through the, through the prism of what the artist understands in that work and what resonates with them. I think it's very important to surround yourself with the things that, in, that inspire you. If you put good things into your mind, then you're going to get good stuff come back out again. I read a lot of um, occult history and philosophy, a lot of history. Film-wise, uh, people like Andrei Tarkovsky, always fascinating, and the way he uses light and texture and movement is mind-blowing. I think it's really important for, for an artist to, for their ideas not to be completely upfront, but to just sort of gestate within the minds of the, of the audience. Immediately finding out what something's about is then very easy to brush off. But something that an audience have to, has to continually think about afterwards will leave a much longer lasting impression. See, like the symbolism in my work because of the, the range of interpretation and meaning within religious, uh, occult and alchemical symbolism, that's a very rich mind to go down. And it's literally about everything. You know, those people are talking about the self, they're talking about the universe, creation, they're talking about the act of creation, which is, you know, what I'm part of the process of. I kind of think that art is essentially the same thing, really, as, you know, magic, as creation. Art is about changing consciousness. 
whether it's through image or dance or poetry, that's the intent of art, is to make people think about something that they may not necessarily have thought about, or explore an emotion, or change a state of being. Art should be helping to develop people, move the world forward. Human beings, people, create stuff to try and understand themselves. It's trying to express things that they can't express in language. It's enormously cathartic, creating artwork, uh, because you're not thinking about anything else, and whatever it is that you're feeling at the time is being channeled through what it is you're making. Probably the biggest question in the whole world, isn't it? I create artwork because I can't not create artwork. It's it's a compulsion. It's the thing that makes me feel like a human being. Um, it's as we spoke about. It's a therapeutic process. It's a medium through which I'm able to figure out who I am, how I feel about things, and to process things that I learn and sort of make there be a point to it. I realised that for, for one small portion of the world, it's, I kind of, I'm helping to explain and progress certain ideas, make sure they don't get sort of stuck in a certain time or certain part of history, to make sure the world doesn't just continue to live off of, like, vintage and retroisms and try and make something new happen. <laughs>